Let's get some clarification here and check the rules. <laughs> the noble game of wiffle ball is a sport that has been played for centuries. The plastic bat has always been a treasure throughout the Middle Ages and after. The ball, the ball, has always been a valuable prize to the winner. Plastic was very rare back in the Renaissance. Wait a second. Made in USA. My bad. Let me restart that. <laughs> Wiffle ball is a game that was invented roughly around 40 years ago or so. Or maybe 30, I don't know. I'll have to check my history books. Anyway, it is pretty much exactly the same rules as baseball, except everything's plastic. See? Our variation, we use a kiddie pool for a strike zone. If the pitch hits the pool, then it is a strike. Three strikes and you are out. A foul ball, a foul ball, that, which consists of any ball that goes outside the line from first to home and outside the line from home to third is also a strike except for the third strike. Also, if the ball misses the pool, it is not a strike. It is called a ball. A four balls and you get free passage to first, also known as a walk. This is home play. is a wiffle ball. This is a pitch. This is a catch. <laughs> that is an error. <laughs> Here are some pitches that you can throw. Now, as you can see, I'm wearing gloves. Seeing that last catch, it's rather cold out, so it like really hurt. So, some pitches. Now, how to make a simple curve ball? Hold it if you're right-handed. To make it curve left, hold it like this, overlapping with your pointer finger in, on some of the holes and your thumb for the bottom holes. And do the delivery straight forward and crisp. Now, this pitch will go around. If it's pitching, it'll you, it, usually, you'd aim at the batter if you want it to go left. So, that was aiming at the batter. As it curved, it curved almost outside. Now, usually, a straightforward pitch that doesn't curve is usually you do all your fingers on top of it, with the top, like that, or with the bottom. If you, if you pitch with three fingers, it's likely to curve. Here's some batting introduction. Now, for right-handed batters, you keep the right hand above the left. Usually with wiffle ball, you don't need to choke up much. Or if any. Now, usually, proper posture with batting is you keep your, your back elbow up. That will give you a nice snap to the back. Swing as hard as you can, or or any other strategic way that you'd like. But if you're if you're starting to swing, but it's a ball, you could pull it back, and that would still be considered a ball. 
but if your bat passes the home plate line and it goes back, it's considered a swing or a strike. Okay. So, look at that! I'm running! When you hit the ball, you start running to second, sorry, first base. If you successfully make it to first base, you have a choice of staying there or moving on to second. I'm staying. Nolan got all the way to third on that hit. And he decided to stay. As you had just seen, I safely got to first, second, and a close third. Now, now that there's a runner on third, we call them runners. As most people, I hope, know, when you hit the ball, you run first, but people can always act first to get you out. Before you get there. advanced mind. There's a man on third. So what time do you have an A? Tag! We yell that out whenever we get to a base. Usually you don't have to if there's no force play. Now I'm going to show you what force plays are. Now I'm going to actually bat left. Now, now that there's a man runner on first and third, there's a force play at second base. Now a force play, you know, when I, if I hit the ball, when I hit the ball, I'm running to first. That ghost runner is running to second, just as fast as I'm running to first. So therefore, you can tag second because a ghost runner has to go there. My ghost runner hasn't made it to second yet. So therefore, Isaac tagged the base and therefore got the man runner that was going to second out. Magic of the wiffle ball rules <laughs> succeed.